All right, in this video, we're gonna learn how to create a nice little set of animation controls using the Framer Motion Animation Library and React. And in doing so, we're gonna learn about the useAnimate hook as well as the very special animate function. So I gotta go and uh, change my laundry in about five minutes. So let's get right into the code and I'll see you there. All right, so welcome to the code. I told you I'd see you here. So first of all, what we have going on in this little demo is we have this box, which is being animated along the X axis. And we have this little set of animation controls where we can play, pause, stop, or cancel the animation or complete the animation. So if we restart this animation and we hit pause, we can see the box stops in its tracks. And then if we hit play, that'll be like resuming the animation from the point where it left off. And we can pause again. And if we stop, well, then we'll no longer be able to play the animation at all. That completely stops it. Let's refresh the page, play the animation again, and let's cancel. And that returns the animation to its initial state. And likewise, if we hit complete, that immediately moves the box to its final animated state. So let's see how to make this work in code. Let's start out by examining the JSX that we're returning. First of all, we have a motion.div, which is the box that we're actually animating. And then we have our controls, which are all enclosed in this div with the class name of controls. And those consist of these five buttons. And you can see that each one of them has an on-click handler, which fires a different function for the functionality that we want to trigger. I'm not really going to get into the CSS in this video because I really just want to focus on the animation and the animation controls. But we just have a basic box with a width and a height, I think, of 150 pixels, background color of slate blue, and a little bit of border radius. And these are just simple buttons, nothing special here with a little bit of padding. So you can create those how you like. But I want to show you really how to get these controls to work. So the important thing that we're bringing in from Framer Motion is this use animate hook, which you can see here on line one. When we call use animate, it returns us two things. It returns a scope and an animate function which is a very powerful function that we can use to write imperative animations. So that's the cool thing about use animate is that it lets us write these imperative style animations in a React context and make sure that the animate function, when it's called, it only applies to those elements that are within the scope. Now scope is actually a ref and we assign it to whatever element we want to be the scope. So in this case, it's this motion div. And because the motion div here is the element that we actually want to animate, we can get a reference to it when we call the animate function via the scope.current property. So all scope.current is, is this div. It's just a reference to this div itself. So here, inside of a use effect, this is where we're calling the animate function. And as we just pointed out, the first argument is the element that you want to animate. The second object is the target object. So which properties do we want to animate and what values do we want to animate to? In this case, we're just doing an X translation, 200 pixels along the X axis. And we're doing it for a duration here of four seconds. So that's the third argument to animate a transition object. And to initialize the starting position of the box, in the motion div, we use Framer Motion's initial prop and initialize the X position to zero. So in the use effect, you can see that we have an empty dependency array. So this animate function is going to be called just the first time on mount. And when this is called, it returns a whole bunch of things. But the particular thing we're interested in here is the controls. And in order to hold a reference to that, we're actually using React's useRef hook, which you can see here, and we're assigning that to controlsRef. So that means now on controlsRef.current, we have access to all these different methods like pause, play, stop, cancel, and complete. And you can see that we're accessing those all here in the various handler functions with controlsRef.current.pause, controlsRef.current.play, and so on. The other thing that we're doing in this use effect is we're returning a cleanup function so that when this component unmounts, we make sure that we stop the animation completely. So now it's up to you to take these basic concepts and get creative and go crazy. So of course, in this animate object, you could do whatever kind of animation you want. Like let's say that we wanted to scale this down a little bit and we also wanted to rotate it uh, 360 degrees, let's say. And let's initialize some of those values to scale of one and rotate zero. Although I'm not sure if that's necessary here, but anyway, 
When we play, we get this. Pause, play again, pause, complete, cancel, and stop. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.